Hey, there are days when I wish I could turn back time. I think of all the crossroads and the routes I have taken, wondering what my life would have looked like if I had made different choices. Would I be in a happier place now? Not so long ago, thinking about it would make me feel restless, unsettled, regretting so many things, aching for the unknown and the unseen. Not anymore. I somehow managed something that seemed impossible. I forgave myself. Every alleged mistake, every wrong move, wrong answer, wrong word, wrong timing, wrong person, every false relationship, every you have to like me moment. Looking back at the way I was, it's now obvious I needed all of that, each one of my cries. I needed it so badly that I had to make same mistakes more than once in order to learn. Sometimes I wonder what would I do if I could turn back time, or would I do anything at all? If I would have to go back with the same mindset that I used to have, I would say, please no, have mercy. Too difficult, too lonely, too heartless. But if I could go back with present mi mindset, I would gladly quickly change many things. I would be nicer to myself. I would trust myself more. I would take responsibility for my actions instead of letting others decide for me. I would remove myself from certain people much sooner. I would take more risks. I would speak up more often. I would put myself first more often. I would care less for what other people think or say about me. I would say no more often, and I would say yes only when I truly mean it. I would sing louder, laugh longer, and pray with more, more belief. Easier said than done. In retrospective, it seems so much easier to be bold and brave and sassy. Today, I am on the verge of a major decision in my life and I have the opportunity to practice what I preach. And guess what? It's not easy at all. Even though I know I'm doing the right thing, and for the first time in my life, I'm taking responsibility for my own life, and everything inside of me screams, go for it. Still, it's frightening. But this time I'll know, I know I'll do it, no matter what. And somewhere deep, deep down, I know I'm strong enough. I don't expect it to be easy. I don't even want it to be easy. I'm just gonna do it and let it roll. I believe in miracles. I believe in love in all its forms. I believe life is a miracle. I believe I can be better than I am. There is this book written in 1954 by then 19 year old Francois Sagan called Hello Sadness. I read it for the first time in my teenage years and I remember being so moved by the book. I was in our kitchen slash dining room slash living room. Mom was cooking, TV was on loud as always. My siblings were going in and out, but I was somewhere else, feeling the book with that sensation that starts somewhere in your stomach and rises up your throat, thick and heavy. Somewhat bittersweet because you know it's elusive reminds you there are places to see, people to meet, tears to cry. And it seems so exciting. Feels like you have what it takes to conquer the world. When and why do we start to think otherwise? When do we start making wrong turns? When do we start to create our beautiful and heartbreaking collection called life experience, where each one of the beads from our life necklace makes us more and more alone? young girl in the book that's something she's going to regret probably till the end of her life. Quote, A strange melancholy pervade, pervades me to which I hesitate to give the grave and beautiful name of sorrow. The idea of sorrow has always appealed to me, but now I'm almost ashamed of its complete egoism. I have known boredom, regret, and occasionally remorse, but never sorrow. To date, envelopes me like a silken web, enervating and soft, and sets me apart from everybody else. End of quote. Aren't we all alone anyway, anyhow? 
the most important moments and discoveries of our lives happen in solitude. Being surrounded by people doesn't mean you're not alone. People taking care of you doesn't mean you're not alone. People cheering you doesn't mean you're not alone. As long as there are some corners of your soul where nobody's invited, you are alone. As long as who you are changes with the circumstances, you are alone. As long as you're running away from being alone, you are alone. The best thing you can do is to embrace your alone. That's when magic happens. And you realize you're never alone. It's always your friend God and you.